Hi, Ade Ayo. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. I'm grand. Good afternoon. How are you doing? I'm very well. Thank you. Okay, so straight into the conversation. So there's been conversations on how Afrobeats has become such a success that even foreign artists can copy. Yeah, um, trying are to, trying yeah, to copy. Yeah. So why do you think there is a sentiment to gatekeep Afrobeats? Yeah, I think it's, uh, again, it's just that, I think primarily is the fear of foreign actors getting on, on board Afrobeats, you know, foreign artists making Afrobeat type music, making Nigerian type music and getting successful off that sound. And there's that fear that when this happens, when the big American, UK, European AV stars get on board Afrobeat and start making Afrobeat music, uh, our artists would have to play second fiddle to them. These guys must mm. win Afrobeat awards. They'll start getting, you know, they'll be prioritized when it comes to the opportunities that come with Afrobeat, you know, the Afrobeat placement in terms of charts, in terms of playlisting, even in terms of of, uh, of, of festivals and whatnot. So uh, there's that fear that um, once these actors get on board Afrobeat, Nigerian artists uh, would have to place a confidence. There's also that, uh, there's also the fear of saturation as well, where if the sound becomes too popular, like, or if it's been propelled, or if it's been, uh, if American artists, the big guys say the bricks of this world, the, the Taylor Swift, you know, your the Billie Eilish, or the, I, don't, I don't see that happening anyway, but see these big names, A stars, they start making Afrobeat music. Uh, that means the audience there, they don't have to come find the music from here anymore. Yeah. They don't have to like, get to listen to us anymore. They can just get the music from their own guys there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, from their own guys there. So that's one of the concerns, even though I think it's pretty much unfounded, but that's, that's, um, that's one of the uh, concerns. I I'm going to still explain why I think it's unfounded. And uh, the other reason is that I think it's more of cultural, more of cultural. And um, although it's not maybe, the, it, it's, I don't know, maybe it's, it, it's, it has to do with less with Nigerians trying to get keep it with we than more of the, I think the, the African American or the Nigerians in the diaspora community, they are trying to get keep it like this, our sound. We don't want you guys to up on this sound. You know, there's that, uh, there's that a bit of volatility. There's that, uh, is that um, how I put it? It's, it's it's a very sensitive subject when it comes to uh, when it seems as the racial lines, irrespective yeah. of like if it's artistic, if it's the S type, it's fashion, you know, like the white man or white man braiding her hair. hair. It's, it's, it's a huge issue. It's an issue for for the for the African American community and stuff like that. So I think the the music, the fact that it's a representation of of, of black culture, it's a representation of African culture. Uh, they feel like it's not appropriate. For white people to try to make the music and you know mm. they also try to like draw a parallel with uh reggae music because uh, uh, a couple of white guys i mean they're still like they're mixed anyway but a couple of white guys won um uh, i think the, the the grammys for the reggae category and that didn't that that didn't go well with a lot of people because i feel like oh, this this jamaican music that should be won by black artists that come yeah. white people and making the music so like okay, if we let this happen, that's what's gonna happen in Africa. If eventually this African music category, all these Afrobeat categories at the at the VMEs or the MTV, the you know the AMEs or what you are, what have you, they'll end up being won by white guys. Then I mean, what do we what do we have then? Nothing, right? So I think that's where the sentiment of gatekeeping Afrobeat is coming from. Okay, so looking at it from that perspective, would you say that the gatekeeping of Afrobeat is necessary? No, absolutely not. Is it's not only that it is not necessary. I don't think it's possible. I don't think it's possible. You cannot get keep sound. You cannot get keep music. Um, Nigeria, Nigeria will make hip hop. Like we make rap music. We make rap music for over two decades now. Yeah. I mean, since the time of Julian Pretty, that uh, key down to the remedies, you know, we're making rap music for a long time. And rap music didn't start from here. It's not something we created. It's something that was imported yeah. from America, right? And what are, what has that meant for rap music in America? Has that reduced their power? You know, that doesn't make rap music any less relevant, right? It doesn't make it any less, um, any less, any less, it doesn't make it saturated. It doesn't make it, it doesn't make American rappers any less, uh, like, place some of it to us, although the, the dynamics are different. America is a much bigger market. It's significantly larger market. So mm. there's almost no way we could overshadow them. Yeah. So there's that perhaps with that perspective. The way we join the party with rap as you uh, but we rap we make rap music, we make hip hop, and we're not bigger than than Kendrick Lamar. We don't have rapper bigger than Kendrick Lamar, we don't have rapper bigger than J. Cole, you know, we don't have rapper as big as Kanye or 50. It's like that market 
where they are coming from is huge. They have the whole world listening to them, right? They have that huge cultural power, that huge economic power, you know, to be able to blow up and have such huge market, such huge sound that they don't need to leave the shores of the country to yeah. become huge, right? They are like, for example, recently, Nick Mill was talking about how he didn't know his music was that popular in Nigeria and in West Africa because he went to Ghana and stuff. And it was like, how do you guys listen to my music? And that's how and the sound it sounded very ridiculous. Like, what do you mean? Now? Mm-hmm. But he genuinely did not know. Yeah, no. Like, he didn't know we had access to Apple Music or Spotify or YouTube. He, he didn't know. It was like, how did they get to listen to my song? I wonder what was going on. He said, probably thought that maybe. Maybe we are living in the bush. <laughs> no, we, we send people, yeah, they'll buy the CDs, then they'll bring it to us. Probably. So, anyway, that's it. So, like, the market is very huge, right? Mm-hmm. So, we can, it's not like it's not a straight up comparison, but in terms of the music, it's just to show that we grow. We've consistently borrowed and we've consistently found inspiration from different sounds, like mostly exported sound, sound yeah. right? From funk to jazz to rap to hip hop, you know, to even pop music to EDM or whatnot. We've always been inspired by foreign music, right? So for people who get to borrow a lot, we we cannot want to get keep although borrowing is an element of globalization, even yeah. from the early days, you always culture culture always you know into like interacts and there's always that that cross-cultural inter- interaction and like it's what you pick from this you pick from that like if you look at english language there are french words in english language that there are latin words from english language there are german words in english language that like originally german words that like evolved to become english language right mm. so it's 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 not it's that's just cultural that cultural cross-pollination right so people have always borrowed so and like nigeria also borrows from sound from everything like that so it's not like in a globalized world and it's not even necessarily just globalization in a world where people of different cultures interact they will always borrow from each other right so it's not it is impossible to keep, keep culture and music is cultural music is hard you cannot keep, keep it like if an American, a white, blue-eyed American guy from Texas or Kentucky he wake up tomorrow morning and say, I want to make music that sounds like what Rema just did. Mm. Gets a producer to try to recreate it and start speaking English and going down and start vibe like that. It sounds like what we've done. And, but this, you cannot ask him not to do it. You cannot say, oh, you cannot do it. Why, can, why are you trying to do this stuff against that? There's no logical argument against it, right? Well, the concerns are that their concerns that make sense. Like, for example, when like we borrow from we borrow a lot, and we recently borrowed from South Africa on piano. Yes. Right. And I think one of the reasons South Africans were on the edge with the Ogu Ogus and our piano stuff, like for us is part of that. Mm. For us is a lot of it is part of our piano we, we beat you guys in yeah. Afghan, it's now our genre. It's a lot of it is part of us, right? But Nigeria is a huge market. Even though we don't have the economic power, and South Africa they do have significantly more economic power than Nigeria. If you take Spotify premium subscriber, if you take Netflix, the difference yeah. is that great. Even though we have like maybe four times their population, I think they're forty. They're like forty something million people in South Africa. I think more than like five times their population. And so, like the difference is that great. In Nigeria, we have barely one hundred fifty thousand Netflix subscribers. They have over a million there. If you look at Spotify, the numbers are staggering, right? So, but we have that huge population, we have that soft power, and we have that huge diaspora. That when we get with, like when we create here, uh, and it, begin, it begins to get momentum, the, the Nigerians in diaspora they pick it up and they propel it and it blows up, right? And that's what we've leveraged to be able to export Afrobeats to a global audience. Mm. And so, with this huge population, with that leverage, with that social, uh, that, that, that soft power, we can get in front of the sound. That is not harsh and will now become the, the primary propellers of that sound. Even though creatively, we are not the creative force behind it. Yeah. We're not the one creatively evolving the sound. Someone else is doing that. South Africans are doing that or borrowing from them, from them, adding our own spice to it and propelling it to the world, like promoting, like exporting to the world. But when they talk about my piano, you are likely to first of all talk about Ashake. For the average the consumer, like this is not someone like maybe not the conscious consumer that, that tries to like find the facts and the, like you know do a deep dive into the history of my piano and how it started from the Johannes Block suburbs or what have you you know you would likely oh Ashake I know Ashake you know because I know Charlie Poppy I know Shady Vibes because the songs are popular but it's not just that it's more popular but you would know there's like a, there's a man called Capsa the small that is the maybe the 
most important voice in, in my piano. There's Tyler I see you. There's mm-hmm. a lot of this vocalistic and all this people. Yeah. So that's the fear of Nigerians that if the Drake makes Afrobeat and it's good because it's Drake, it's going to be good. I cannot compete with Drake. Mm-hmm. I cannot Drake will be bigger than me. Mm-hmm. And Drake now becomes like the face of Afrobeat when the music is like in Nigeria. Mm-hmm. So that's a space. That's one of our space that has been robbed. We'll be, will be wrong for our speech. So, speech. so if Drake, if Post Malone, if all these people start making Afrobeat, then and becomes like very, very popular, very mainstream, that means we have to pay second fiddle. But it's not, it's not necessary because that is what you desire. That is what, that's what you want when it comes to promoting your sound to a global audience. You know, when hip hop left the shores of America and it's now the biggest or the most popular genre in the world, from different countries in the world, they rap. Right? From, Africa to India to Asia, Asia. they all have their own type of rap music, right? It's like that. There's a culture of hip hop that goes along with it, like the the the, the way the, the the way they dress, the fashion, you know, the way they dress, the jewelries, the lifestyle, even the beef part of it. It's, yeah. It was exported alongside the the, 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 music. the music. And now, if you look at our artists, if you look at if you, if you look at Konami, but these are not even rappers. They're pop stars. They dress like rappers. Yeah. Like, if you look at, say, a, a Rudy Rich or say a 21 Savage or Travis Scott, and you look at Charlie Pop, you can't tell the difference. Oh, well, Charlie Pop, no, Charlie Pop, my leg would be a good example. A the best example because Charlie Pop is the rapper. Mm. You look at David Do. If you look at David Do and you look at who is it, like one of the biggest American rappers, look at Drake, the way Drake dresses, the way he uses, like the way he lavishes money on chains and everything. Mm. Yeah. There's no difference of David Do. David Do is, is hip hop in fashion. You know, that's the influence of rap music when it comes to the German mainstream music. And it's also cultural. So when you want to become a big genre, people who eat everything really bite off that genre. And when they're biting off it, you become more global. You're exporting your culture with you. I mean, people are eating your love rice now in different parts of the world. You know, people, uh, people who are not Nigerians are speaking pigeon in their music. Yes. Chris Brown, we, for we now got Slime and honorary Nigerian, yeah, <laughs> right at this uh, point, yeah. Like Steph Rondon is speaking, picking that music. You have 21 Savage singing, singing, comma, you know. So it's 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 soft power, you it's like it's uh, it's it's how it, it's, it's what you export to you when when in natural and in the, and in the studio, when in Kelechi and in the D, when they speak pigeon in the dressing room, and then Rob is wrapped up on Vandy. I don't know, you don't know this people, right? uh-uh. but you know, you yeah, <laughs> the wrapped up on Vandy, and Vandy was speaking pigeon. It's soft power, you know, it's how you export your culture. So we are still like one of any stage of globalization when it comes to Afrobeat, and we're not even in the level of saturation where yet where we should be gatekeeping. Mm-hmm. I do understand that the, the concerns of big artists getting, if not even big artists, like 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 familiar Omukun artists making making Afrobeat makes it easier for them to get the music without accessing us like coming to yeah. us, right? And, and, and it's true. It's possible. It's possible, but but it doesn't you cannot stop it. Well you have to raise your level. You can't mm-hmm. stop it, right? When um uh, for example we make people we make rap music. But that doesn't stop us from listening to American rap music. Yes. Again, it might not be the best example because they are really, really big. They are really, really, really big, right? But it's it's like the fact that uh, a UK guy makes Afrobeat doesn't mean that you, that big Afrobeat Nigeria, will not get an audience there. There. As soon as you raise your level. Right? So that's it. Um, and it's about understanding that it's a plus for us, rather than the negative. The, 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 the upside far outweighs the downside, right? When K Sena came to Nigeria to create content with, with Shang, 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 and um, and and anger with Davido, and he saw a lot of stuff, he was surprised, like uh, you know that 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 quintessential white man surprise or American surprise that wow, you guys have Lamborghinis, <laughs> you guys have Ferraris, you guys have huge clubs like this. I, they, they do they don't they don't believe it, right? Besides that, like he's a huge, he's he's he's, he's barely twenty years old, he's young, he, he has a huge audience, global audience. And young people listen to him and watch his content. A lot of these people don't might not know Afrobeat music. They might know the name of some big guys. They might know Pona Boy, they might know Rema, they might know Whiskey, but they don't necessarily maybe know a lot of Afrobeat music. But when Kai came to Nigeria and Angle with David, you know, and people watch his content, a lot of people get to even know a bit about Nigeria. Then, you know, a lot of people get to. So this, this is huge exposure. So in some way, if an American artist or European artist make Afrobeat, it's, it's going to get huge. Exposure for Afrobeat, and it's just more global audience. You're getting more global audience. You should it should be encouraged, not even discouraged. Mm. 
Imagine one of these Korean pop guys. I mean, so a couple of them are already tried like uh, buy some of it and make out from it type sound. But I, I, I want more. I want more. I want like imagine BTS make Afrobeat music. Maybe even future one of our guys. Mm. Like future Ira Star or something. Like, uh, like it's amazing. Imagine BTS and Ira Star. That would be huge. Imagine the kind of audience it exposes Afrobeat to. We have not we've not thought I think this this uh, contemporary mainstream artists, I think the Nigerian contemporary mainstream music have not taught South Asia yet. Like we've taught we have, we've, like penetrated India, thanks to CK's blog one thirty and it must come down. But you see like Southeast Asia, your, your Japan, your China, your Korea, Philippines, you know, those places that we've not like penetrated that market yet. And someone like BTS, you know, making that whole sound and people getting to learn that oh that sound is from Nigeria and this is what it sounds like. It's huge. It exposes you to a whole new market yeah. to go contact, to go make money from, to go talk. And they are, they, are, they are paying customers that will be excited to see you, like to watch you perform. Uh, I think there's a video AOT2 posted one time recently, shout out AOT2 of Kristen Essie and the performing at a, at a festival, at a music festival in Korea. She was singing Yoruba. And that was like 30 something, 35 years ago. So imagine Asha Keshi vibes, imagine Charlie Pop, imagine Wonder Boy going to perform, selling out an arena in Seoul. It's mm. crazy, it's crazy. And one of the ways for us to go there is by their own artists making our type of music. You know, giving us that hand and okay, one collaborate, we want to make your type of music, come this future, you come this collaborate with you guys and everything. So I think it's, I think the, the positive far is negative, and that's why. Mm. The attempt to keep, keep it so necessary, uh, it's even borderline impossible. Okay, so you've said that keeping Afrobeat is impossible. So what then should be the focus? Yeah, I think the focus is about elevating the sound. I think the, uh, that's why I do agree with what Rema said when he said, uh, you know, this conversation, like this is a conversation that's been occurring, but the latest version of this conversation started with Rema's, uh, for Rema's speech at his, uh, at his, uh, at his listening party in London. Yeah, so shout out Rema. Uh, he said, he said his new album was inspired by the desire to make Afrobeat type music that cannot be easily recreated by the foreign guys. He, he, he argues that the way we're making music now, the way our artists are making music now, they, they make it, they've done it down the Afrobeat elements so they can appeal to a global audience. And I understand that. Mm. I mean, you're making yourself less Nigerian in language, in style, in delivery, just so you want to make music that showcases spearmanship, that you savvy right, that you're deep. That you can that you can make songs that the Europeans, the Americans, you know, they can connect to. You know, so that means that you limit your Nigeria, like quote unquote Nigeria. So you're yes. watering it down. Yeah, you're watering it down. And now what you're making, you know, that swing, that steady swing, that R and B infusion, it's something that the average American artist can make and even make very, very well. You just need to add a bit of Afrobeat drums to it, get a bit of Afro Afrobeat progression and bounce, and they are good to go. They're good to go. So it says song like Oziva, like uh, which Af American person can make Oziva. That's like, actually yeah. my favorite song on the album. Yeah, I mean it, the song is going, right? Take it up. So, and I, I get it. I get it. like even though it does sound like you know punk rock, it does sounds like heavy metal, like you know, that high tempo and the Mara, like the song that the, there's also a part of Nigerian street music that was how really DJ YK of course make it. Uh, I, I I think they can if they want to, if can you can you make Black skin head, Kanye has the Jesus album, Travis Scott, they can sit down and chop it up, but you can't do that as Nigerian. That's what matters. You cannot do it as Nigerian. You cannot speak. And why I do very much like that, and why, why, why I, uh, if there's ever any form of gatekeeping, it should be creative. It should be the fact that we're making music that is emphatically Nigerian, mm. emphatically African right. in language, in delivery, in production, in drums. You know, when it comes to Afrobeat, Afrobeat is like the element that makes up Afrobeat. It's the lang primarily the language when you speak pidgin. You know, there's this argument that if you like make RB slow, but when you don't start to speak pidgin, the drop lamba is not Afrobeat. You understand? Mm. So there's that language, that part of the language, the our indigenous language, the pidgin English. You know, there's that type of delivery, the way we sing, the way we like, the way we flow songs, there's our production, our drums, you know. Uh, drums is what define African music, our uh, drums, and there's also our reality. You know, the way we do things we talk about that only like that is like that connects primarily to a Nigerian. Yeah. Artist. You know, when you think about you think about Sapa, 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, like there's economic meltdown every like most part of the world are going through. Part of the world is going through economic meltdown. Like different countries are going through cost of crisis, uh, cost of living crisis. But Nigerian reality is a bit different. You know, there's a way in a Nigerian to convey this economic struggle, this social economic struggle, and you start to get it right. Even when it comes to the whole, like last last for example, it's 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 it's, it's, it's an aggression. Like it's an aggression. Like guy got that broken and he was thinking about it. Now there are tons of adverts on this world. Tons. But there's a way last black connect to me. So Nigerians, yes. Yeah, because, because when you see that, now everybody go to breakfast. Yeah, we you get like, it. You get like, it's, you, don't, <laughs> if you brought it all. You get, so there's a way that's what drive us for a bit. The language, the drums, which is the production, the delivery, the we flow, and also our reality. You know, and all this comes together to forge up to forge up for a bit. So that's the same way other genres are forged as well, from folk to country music to hip hop. You know, so if even if an American artist want to make Afrobeat or an European artist want to make Afrobeat, you cannot recreate this element. You can recreate the drums, right? But you cannot drop Lamba. Lamba, you don't have Lamba as, as much as Asha here. You cannot recreate the Lamba of Mali. You cannot speak that with Pigeon Mali speaking. You cannot paint images with Pigeon with the Tony Khan. You understand? You don't, you can't speak to your body, you can't speak evil like Fino. You know, mm. you cannot use evil slang like Jerry. You know, so there's that limitation you have, that limitations you have. Then your reality is, of course, different. Different, yeah, yes. Comes in, you're, you're in London, you are in France, you're in Paris, wherever you are, Berlin. If you're not in Lagos, you're not in Ibubu, you're not in Bini. You're not, you're not in Port Harcourt. You're not in Port Harcourt. So, you know, that that reality is different. The reality that drives you is you cannot, you cannot channel, easily channel it. You understand, right? So it's very different. So the so that's why if okay, when we dump down that reality, what now forms that and that's what I'm asking. When we dump down what forms this Afrobeat, that language, that reality, that that essence, when we dump it, when we try to like remove ourselves from it and try to dump it down in the name of I don't want to be buff and don't call me an Afrobeat artist that can make different type of music, then you mm. just start like trying to write flamboyantly, trying to write like Try to channel that that London vibe, that 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 reality that appeal more to a London person than it does to a Nigerian artist. Mm. Then you're like them. You guys, when they start making Afrobeat, they will not be starting to distinguish so, you yeah. guys. You understand? Like because you're not like showing that you're quintessentially Nigerian, and that's why I do. I do. I do remember, even though I might not be the biggest fan of the of the product. Like I do feel like there's a bit of this lack of effort and he didn't really give give himself to it and like try to elevate the sound. It was just like one dimensional. But I do agree with him that yeah, if that if at all like and I don't know if at all there's ever a gatekeeping of Afrobeat, we should be creative. So the point is that when it comes to Afrobeat music, the the roots should always be brought back home. There's that the sound, the style, the delivery, the language, the reality, the reality. should always be right to Nigerians. It's the same way. We have rappers here. Ladipo is a fine rapper. Emma is, as far as I'm concerned, the top five rappers in the entire, entire world. World. I will not consider there are people that can rap more than him. I don't, I don't go into that. But <laughs> yeah, so we have Odumodu. We have a lot of good rappers, right? But when you listen to an American rapper or a UK rapper, it's always different from us. We have Psycho YP making incredible trap music. But when you listen to Trap music from Chicago and Atlanta, it's different. It's different. Sure. You know, yeah. So when you listen, so it's because it's because there's a reality that drives rap music there that we don't have. You know, the whole my Glock this, my gun this, my drugs this, my money this. It's if you try to rap like that, it's just going to come up as weird and ridiculously. Yeah, popular. it's not really relatable to our words. reality. You don't have a Glock in Nigeria. Stop talking your Glock. Maybe your Shaka Bull or something like that. But, you know, you know, like you say, my. Uh, uh, we we uh, try to win my drugs. This try to my ops. This whole horse like it's like trying between two one savage and 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 see my ops taking pictures of the guns, but it's just their food. Like bro, your ops don't have guns. Your ops are fit that to shit about you, Mister. Right? So like when that's why rap music, mm. Nigerian rap music that connects is dom- they domesticated the bados, the slatter, the fino. Yeah. When they have ice, ice prints or the money, when they make shall open they make rap music, they bring it all. They channel it in Nigerian reality. Yes. Because that's what we can connect to. Then if you want to listen to that type of music, you know where to go to. You understand? So no matter how hard you try, that, that's not to say 
in a, a good Nigerian rapper cannot wake up tomorrow and try to like sound American and start talking about this block, this right, blah, blah blah, this this that. But it's not going to stick. People will really buy it. It will appeal to people because you don't actually have the, the lived reality to convince it, you convey it. So that's the thing. So it's the fact that we need to always be in front of the sound. Make sure we are the one involving the sound and make sure this sound is essentially Nigerian. You know, mm. don't make Afrobeat like like it, it, and there's all there should, should, should always be balance. This is not me saying everybody should make Oziba type music or everybody should make Afrobeat type of music where you always you only speak pigeon or you only speak yeah lamba and everything like that. No, you can make different type of different kind of music. There's snares making that music, and there's Ira making that music. You know, there's there's a there's there's Chiki making R and B type of music that embraces Nigerian element. Like there's different stuff, right? So you have to. It's, it's about striking the balance, but it's about also being at the forefront of the of propelling the sound. If you think that tomorrow an American guy or an European artist can wake up and make Afrobeat music, then make sure that the next wave of Afrobeat song sound is coming from Nigeria. Make sure the next wave is not coming from. UK or US, where you're going to now have to go and pick up from there, and now they're not the more propelling Afrobeat uh, mm. creatively. No, make make sure that the creative, the, the creative juice, the creative propeller of Afrobeat remains in Nigeria. Make sure Nigerian artists are the ones creatively propelling the sound, and that means that we elevate our 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 artistry. You know, our, our artists keep evolving, keep elevating the sound, and you know, to keep pushing themselves. And so that's that's why I think should be the preoccupation. And also, I think this is just a reminder of why we need to build our ecosystem. I mean, no American artist will lose sleep over the fact that they're in general powers rap or make trap music. What do you do that? It's not going to stop them from selling out arenas in and outside their country. 50 cents to sell out a hotel in Nigeria. You would. You would. Drake would. Like, I'm we're poor, so Drake might not easily sell out the stadium because we, I'm, the only reason he would not sell out the stadium is because we're poor. But well, if 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 Nigeria had the spending power, Drake would easily sell out the stadium in Nigeria easily. It's done because you have the you know you have the resources to push your music from here, from here, yeah. from here, over here. here. So that's the that's that's what we need. This should be a sobering reminder of why we need to build our ecosystem. That gatekeeping shouldn't be the preoccupation. I have fear that I don't pay second fee to I don't them to rob me of my place. And it's actually cute to see because what many of these guys are doing don't box me. Don't box me. I'm not from it. Don't box me. Don't call me Afrobeat artist. Don't box me. I don't want to. I want to disassociate myself. I'm not Afrobeat. They do Afrobeat. I do Afro this. Mm. They do, you know, try to like make yourself look special. But now you are seeing that, okay, be like this of the Aki guys. They want the, the sound and the good. I'm like, no, 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 look, I'm not touching more. This, that's our Afrobeat too. That chats we are getting, that Afrobeat chat on Billboard, that Afrobeat chat on UK chat, those Afrobeat slots on wireless festival. You know, and all those actually slots of festivals around the world, we love it, we like it, it's been the views done. Even though we're not trying to say we're Afrobeat, but we are Afrobeat. So, so it's kind of like really cute, right? So, so it's just a reminder for us to be the ecosystem so that we could actually harness the potential of our population. Two hundred million people, mm. we can't do shows of 15k people, arts can't go on tour yet. Nothing. Actually. Nothing. We don't even vex one our voices. January twenty twenty, uh, January first twenty twenty three, yeah, twenty three. Yeah, not you say no, they do. No, they do show you. <laughs> the last time I come Nigeria was at Elmelu, at at at, at uh, Elmelu's white party. Yeah. Yeah, his birthday. No, no, the all white party. White party every year. Yeah. That's all white party. Yeah. But from the in flavor, I think they will do a good one. And so, your happy artists, our biggest artists cannot don't perform in Nigeria. The video is, is the biggest star that consistently and down is because he wants to do it at all costs. He wants to, he just wants to do it. Like he doesn't really he really wants to do it, right? Then December we take what we get. Now it's like this is just like instead of trying to get people for a bit and say, Oh, you guys there, the children do it here, yeah, because when you guys do it there, you guys take money out of our pocket, you guys like rob off us of rob off or of opportunities we should be having. We should be more focused on building the ecosystem. We partner with the government. You know, build ecosystem, try to like get DSPs to come down and show more commitment. Don't just fucking post the their yeah, top one red chat and be like I'm number one in the country. When you do when they interview, when you go there to speak to them, because you guys go there, when you guys want to drop out, when you guys go there, you guys have a lot of stuff Tell them about how like 
what are you guys doing to actually come to Nigeria and get more people to use your streaming platform? Because when people you know, use your streaming platform, I'm going to make more money. I'm going to make more money if 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 there are 200 million Nigerians and barely barely two million Nigerians are able to stream music. That's 180 million Nigerians. Let's just even assume you get like let's just that's like a lot of people. That's like 60 million potential music consumers that you are not unlocked, right? When you get the chance to speak to these people, when you get the chance to enter this room, ask them these questions. Ask them that why are you guys not coming to Grand, like coming on Grand and, and, and showing a bit of commitment. Shout out to those who are doing it. I don't want to start calling names, but we know a couple of DSPs who are on Grand putting in the work, and we know the ones that don't actually give it there beyond wanting artists to post their chat and whatnot. Right? So this is just a super reminder of why we need to build our own ecosystem. So we will not be there begging them and fighting that they shouldn't. They shouldn't. Make Afrobeat so they don't, they don't they don't win our awards, you know, because you're scared of losing Afrobeat award and you're scared of losing your store at festivals. Because you cannot fucking make money off here. You cannot nobody's gonna pay you two million here, yeah, but they'll pay you there because we don't have the money here yeah, and we don't have the ecosystem here. Yeah. So yeah, this is just a reminder of everyone of the job that needs to be done. And 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 also remember that you cannot you cannot uh, get keep music. So what's going to happen is gonna happen. So you either step up, reach a level, or you accept what you get. And that's what's